What's up YouTube fam? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a recreation again because I know you guys love when I do that. So today I'm going to recreate this look that Sam Visser did on Bella Hadid. It's a very like modelly, sultry, it's a little bit 90s I would say. And trust me when I say that I struggle today. It's just the way that it is sometimes. I kind of overdid it. I kind of dragged it out a lot. I kind of looked like a drag queen there for a while. Not that there's anything wrong with that. They're fabulous but it's not what she looks like so i i managed to pull it back i managed to save it and you're gonna see all of that <laughs> anyways if you're new here welcome my name is nats and i want my channel to be a space where we take an as realistic and true but also fun approach to beauty so if that sounds like something you can get down with so please subscribe also like to send out a reminder that if you follow a lot of small channels engagement to us is everything so whether it's a like just a comment with an emoji or a question. We appreciate it so much. It means everything to us because when we get high engagement, it's much more likely for YouTube to pick our content up and spread it across the platform. So if you like this video, please engage with it. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, well, let's get into the video. Let's prime our lids. I'm gonna use the next Proof It Waterproof Eyeshadow Primer. By the way, how they managed to do that hair on these models, you know, with the top bun, but with the two strands hanging at the front. How they managed to do that and it still look good is beyond me. Like if I try to do that shit, I would look like a stray cat that had just survived like a storm or tornado or something, I don't even know. <laughs> So I know that her eyeshadow looks kind of coldish, but I can still see that like there's a little bit of a warm tone peeking through and kind of warming it all up. For me, I need to do things like that because I don't, it's probably because I'm not a makeup artist, but when I try to only use cool tone colors, it kind of ends up looking like ashy and it makes me look a little bit washed out. So I do need just a little bit of warmth at the base, if that makes sense. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt orange. I always say this, but like right wherever my excess skin right here is the heaviest, that's where I start applying. So not too far down, not at the end of the fold, and not too far in. I don't want to go too far in because it seems like most of her color is concentrated on the outer or like the mid to the outer part of the eye so i'm not going to work too much on the inner part of the eye today okay blending this out with a blending brush just very gently blending this out so i waited about an hour for the sun to come back and now i'm like it's not happening so it. we're just gonna have to work with this light Whatever, I just blended that shadow out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a dome brush like this, and I'm gonna go into this small Isadora palette and grab this darker taupey color. Any dark taupey color you can, you can you can grab whatever. I'm gonna work with multiple palettes today because I kind of need it. I don't have one palette for this look. So I'm gonna go into that color and then I'm gonna place it kind of where I placed this color, but I'm gonna keep it in a, a little bit of a smaller area. So I'm gonna start where I started last time, right there. And we're gonna drag it out later. For now, let's just do that. And then once again, just blending this in. So the difficult part is, well, <laughs> the difficult part is that Bill Hadid's eye looks like this and ours doesn't. So we're gonna have to work with whatever we got. And I'm not saying it's bad that she's got done whatever she's got done for her face. I just want you to manage your own expectations. Unless you're born looking like she does, where like her eyebrow is almost in her hairline and she has so much lid space she could do like five eyeshadow looks on her eye at the same time and they'll all be able to fit. <laughs> um, most of us don't. I still actually have quite a lot of lid space, but my eye is not as tightened as hers or it's not as um, upwards tilted as hers. 
Mine are almost a little bit downwards tilted, so either way, I just have no features that look like her at all. So I don't expect this eyeshadow look coming out looking exactly the way hers do either. Keep the eyeshadow further down than you would think because one of the things with this eye look is that she does have quite a lot of space left right up here. So don't bring it too far up. Kind of try to stay down here. Whatever is left on my brush and on my eye, I'm just gonna very lightly start dragging this outwards. I watched an interview with the guy who did this makeup and he's like, I really like to drag the shadow far out. He's like almost out all the way to the temple. So that's what I'm gonna do. And as I said, still, when I look at this look, it looks like most of the eyeshadow is uh, concentrated right here. So I don't wanna place any eyeshadow right out here. I just want to kind of pull whatever I have on my eye outwards and blend it like that because it looks like you can't really see the end of that eyeshadow that she's got going on because she's got that piece of hair covering it but it looks like it's kind of just blended out um so that's what we're gonna do today <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna deepen that up a little bit more and place some more of that shadow right there and keep on blending but as i said Try to stay in the place that we place the shadow. Don't go too far up. And then you can once again try to drag it a bit outwards. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into that taupey shade and we're going to try to start connecting, you know, right down here and Sort of just like blending that. So we're starting to create a little bit of a rounder shape down here. So kind of, I would say the tricky part with this makeup is a little bit that, as I said, we can't see the, the end of the eyeshadow, but um, it looks like the shape is somewhere in between like a pointy cat eye and a round. It's kind of like an oval shape in a sense, as you can see that I got going on right here. So that's what I'm trying to kind of create on this side too. This look is all about the blending. Like she has got a seamless blend going on right out here. So it does take some time and you will have to spend some time blending, but God knows it's gonna be worth it. Just wait until the result and just trust, trust the process. I'm gonna be happy with eyeshadow for now. We're gonna go in again later, but what I wanna do now is start working with some cold eyeliner. I grab a black cold eyeliner and a angle brush, and I take some of that coal onto that angle brush and I start tight lining. Placing that black kind of right in between your lashes, and that's gonna tighten up and thicken up your lash line and it's gonna frame your eye in the nicest way. The sun is back. It does look like she's got a little bit of an eyeliner going on and it's kind of smudged out. So I'm gonna start with just once again, grabbing some of that angle brush and then I'm just gonna lay it on the outer third of my um, lid. And then I'm gonna go in with a brush like this. It's just a small, it's a pencil brush apparently, that's what it says on it. And then I'm just gonna blend that top because it looks like everything is very soft, everything is very blended and sultry. And if you're finding it difficult blending that coal out, you can go in with either like a dark brown eyeshadow or a black eyeshadow to blend that top. I'm gonna grab some black. And then I just start kind of pulling it outwards. And don't worry if it doesn't look perfect right at the end right here. Um, we're gonna conceal that a little bit later to make sure that that um, 
shape is very lifted and upwards angled. I'm gonna go in directly with this cold pencil and I'm just gonna apply some and start like just blending that upwards. Okay, so now that I have that liner going on, I feel like we know we, we got some little, little patchiness going on right here. So I'm gonna go into that same dark taupe brown color and I'm just gonna start applying that. And just right there. And just blending everything in together. Now I'm gonna grab a black eyeshadow, just the tiniest bit on the tip of this. With the black especially, please be careful. Don't overdo it. It's so quick and then all of a sudden you're like, what, what, what the hell did I just do? I'm taking a little bit of that black, just placing it right out here, just so that we blend in that cold pencil with that brown shadow and with a clean blending brush and just work them all in together. I'm gonna go in with my flat brush and I'm gonna grab just a color that looks like whatever nude color I got going on on my under eye and I'm just gonna place that and I'm gonna bring it down a bit and don't worry if you like screw up the blend because this is a light color and we'll be able to kind of blend that wide away. Go in with your blending brush and then kind of swoop over that. So do you see what, what I mean with that kind of, it's not a cat eye, it's not sharp and it's not round. It's a little bit of a kind of oval shape going on. Okay, so I know it looks a little bit crazy right now. We're gonna remove some at the end right here and clean it up. But first I wanna go in and line my eye a bit. So once again, I'm going to grab that co-liner and that angle brush and I'm just gonna line my waterline just to kind of Tighten this eye up a bit. She has a little bit going on of like a brown, but she also has more of an almond shape eye that I have. So I'm gonna go in with the black because I, I want it a little bit more like, you know? And then I'm also gonna do my inner corner. Getting there. I'm gonna go off camera, do some mascara, and I'll be right mascara on so now i want to clean up a little bit out here i don't want a sharp line as i said once again i can't see what's going on at the end of that eyeshadow but i'm just assuming but i, I want to clean it up with some concealer but i don't want a sharp edge so i'm thinking i'm gonna grab more of a fluffy brush kind of like this one and i'm gonna go in to my concealer this is my make the make pot concealer in n4 and I'm just gonna dip that in a little bit. And I'm kind of gonna dance around that shadow. And, you know, very carefully start to like, just clean that up right there. I think I've overdone it a bit. So I'm gonna remove a little bit because the other eye has way less eyeshadow. especially like towards the end. So I'm gonna just dab a little bit of concealer and try to um, minimize whatever I've got going on because I did too much because that's what I always do. And I can see that I need to remove quite a bit. I think the reason for why this happens is I have a lot more lid space on this eye. My eyes are so uneven and I have so much more lid space on this side than I do on this. So I always do a lot more shadow on this eye than on the other one. But this just goes to show that like you can absolutely save an eye if you accidentally do too much.
just blending with a clean blending brush. Trying to keep that oval shape. Yeah, this is it. So when I look at her skin, it's got a very satin finish. Um, she doesn't look like she has a lot of highlight going on. She doesn't look like she has a lot of bronzer going on. It's just all this one nice, I don't know, surf, it just looks so satiny, happy, healthy kind of skin. So no glow really, but I am dry. And if I'm gonna use a satin to matte type of foundation, I wanna prime with oil because that's gonna give me that glow from within type of look. And that's what we want. Cause she does look like she's glowing from within. I'm gonna use my Squalane Oil from Timeless Skin and I'm just gonna drop a few drops of this and just kind of Add it into my skin. So for my foundation, I'm gonna use the Milani Concealer Perfect 2-in-1. And instead of my regular beauty blender, I'm gonna apply this today with a brush. Can you believe it? I don't know if I can. This is a brush from Make the Make. I think it's their like cream blush brush, but this is the type of brushes that I like to use when I apply liquid foundation because I feel like I can just work it into the skin nicely. So I'm just gonna Go in and start. I always start with my cheeks because that's where I need the most coverage personally. Because that's where my skin is, or like my skin tone is the most uneven. The thing about using a brush is that you really want to take time with it. To me, it's more time consuming using a brush than the Beauty Blender because the Beauty Blender doesn't leave streaks uh, the way that a brush can do. So I like to really take my time with a brush and really work the product in. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Do you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm going to contour, can you believe it? So sh her face is snatched and um, I never contour because I don't really know how to do it. So I'm gonna try today. I have the Beauty Pie, I think this is a cream eyeshadow. It's an on taupe, but I'm thinking it's a great contouring shade. Um, see that? I'm only going to contour on my cheekbones. So I'm just gonna place some right there. And then I'm gonna grab that um, foundation brush and I'm just going to kind of stipple that. Ooh, that looks so nice. Wow. I actually really like that. <laughs> okay, and then before we move on to the lips, I just want a little subtle flush of color on my cheeks. She looks like she's got a little, little, little bit and I'm gonna go into my Make the Make Caprique Palette and Berry and I'm gonna grab this color right here. It's actually really a highlight, I think, but it's got a little tiny bit of just a pinkish glow and I'm just gonna pop that on here just to have something going on on the cheeks, you know? See that? So, so subtle. Let's do our lips. I'm gonna line them with this NYX pencil in Soft Spoken. And she looks like she's got the liner, like a little bit of a darkish brown liner going on like on the outer edges of her lips. I don't have a brown liner, so I'm just gonna use this one. And I'm basically just going to Line the outer corners. Like so, there we go. And then I'm gonna go in with the, where did I put it? The Glossier Clay Vanilla Clip or Vanilla Clip in Genius. It's just this pinkish color. She's just got a little bit of like nudish pink going on. I don't want too much. Actually, I find that too pink, so I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Revolution Gloss in, I think this is Val. And that's just gonna brown it up a bit. And that's the look. 
Okay, you guys, this is the finished look. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I know you guys like when I do like celebrity recreation or like, you know, more famous makeup artist recreation looks. Um, so I hope you like this one too. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.